We use the law of sines for any triangle that is not a right triangle. So the law of sines, it's really important that we talk about the different cases that we have. So the first piece that we want to talk, I want to talk about today would be considered case one. Case one is when you have one side and two angles that are given to you. Now that can be in any triangle It doesn't matter the shape of that triangle. What is important here is that we have one given side and you're given that length of that side. Just fix that real quick. Now, this first one we're going to go ahead and we're going to call this one the case of side angle angle. What this means is you're given this side and then you are given the next two consecutive angles. That means side and then two angles. for that side angle angle. The next one is this one, we're gonna go ahead and call that angle side angle. And that is where you're given the side and then you have two angles on either part of those sides. This case is nice because there's only one solution for both of those cases. Now, that's case one. That's the second case that we are going to talk about, let me give myself a little bit more room here. Is the case the case? when you have side, angle, side. So in this case, what we have is we have a given triangle and two sides are given. The important part with this though is that we also have the angle in between. sides. So what I mean by that is I have two sides that were, would be given. So this side and this side. For side angle side to work, we must have the angle that is in between those two sides. Now the third case is called the ambiguous case. And this case is called the side side angle. So similar to the triangle that we have above, only if I have these two given sides, I don't have the angle in between. I would either be given angle one. Now, the problem with this is that triangle could be drawn like this, or that same triangle could be drawn like this, where this side and this side have the same length. So there's two different types of triangles that I could have with this. So you could have one solution or two different solutions with this triangle. So whenever you have the case of two sides and an angle that is not included, be aware you have to check to make sure they're not ambiguous. 
All right, I'm going to go ahead and do some examples from the Law of Signs notes for us today. So the first one I'm going to go ahead and do, move this out of our way, is I'm going to go ahead and do number one. So for number one, the drawing that is given, and remember these drawings are not to scale, I have the triangle where this is 28 degrees. Over here, I have this portion of this angle is 42 degrees. Those are labeled angle A, B, and uh, C. Now remember, going across from the triangles are our lengths. So this is side B, side A, and side C. To solve this triangle completely, I need to find all of the following. I need to find the measure of angle A. I need to find the length of A, the length of B, and the length of C. Remember, this is not a right triangle, so you cannot use the Pythagorean uh, theorem. So to start off with, I'm going to, because I'm given both angle B and C, and I'm also given that side B is equal to 10, I'm gonna start using the ratio with B. And the reason I'm starting with B is because I'm both given angle B and side B. So angle B is the sine of 42 degrees over the length of side B, which is 10, now, the next one I'm going to go ahead and do is angle C. So angle C is the sine of 28 degrees over the length of C. So I want to go through and find C. To do this, I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply for both of those. When I do that, I get C times the sine of 42 is equal to the sine of 28 degrees times 10, or angle C is equal to 10 times the sine of 28 degrees all over the sine of 42 degrees. Make sure your calculator is in degree modes when you go ahead and do this. Um, and you're going to find that C is equal to 7.016. We're going to go ahead and round these to the nearest tenths place. So we're going to round here. So my final answer for C will be 7.02. All right, so the next ratio we can go ahead and solve for Let's go ahead and solve for A. Now, measure of angle A is given to us even though we don't have that number. It's easily found by taking 180 minus 42 minus 28. So I know that the measure of angle A is 110 degrees. And again, obviously this is not drawn to scale. So the last two things you need to find are the length of A and B. To find the length of A, I go ahead and use the fact that I have A over the sine of 110 degrees. Um, I can set this equal to either B or C, but because B was given to us, I that's the one I'm going to choose, so that would be 10 over the sine of B. Solving for A gives us 10 times the sine of 110 degrees, all divided by the 
sine of B, which was 28 degrees, or angle A, or side A gives us 14.043, so length of A is 14.04 when rounded. The last one you can go ahead and solve for is, and since B was already given to us, B was just 10. So we've completely solved for this triangle. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the next question I have in the guided notes. So the next question I have does not have a picture for us. So when we're going through and do this, let's, that's the first thing we need to always do. So we have, are given the information that we have triangle P, Q, R. We are given that the measure of angle Q is equal to 29 degrees, that angle measure of angle P is equal to 18 degrees and R is equal to uh, 20 degrees. So the first thing I want to go ahead and do to help us draw our triangle to scale is I want to make sure that I find the other angle. So to find the measure of angle R, the measure of angle R is just 180 minus the other two angles, which gives us 133 degrees. So as I'm going through and drawing that triangle, I'm going to put R at the bottom because I know R is my obtuse angle. So I'm going to go ahead and put angle R here. It doesn't matter where you put P or Q. You'll get the same triangle either way. Let's go ahead and label these angles. I know that angle R is 133 degrees, Q is 29 degrees, and P is 18 degrees. Now, the only side that I have is given to me with side R. Again, that's directly across here, so I know R is equal to 20 units. It doesn't tell me what kind of units this is. We're just going to leave it as 20 for now. So once I have the triangle done, we need to go through and solve for side P and side Q. The two ratios I have for that are P over sine of 18 degrees is equal to 20 over the sine of 133 degrees. Um, solving for this, you'll go ahead and get P is equal to 8.45. And the second ratio to go ahead and solve for Q um, will be Q over the sine of 29 degrees is equal to um, 20 over the sine of 133. Doing this, you can go through and solve Q will be 